Welcome to our tutorial on the isoparametric curve command. First, I'm going to create a surface to which we can apply the command. Let's activate the sketch tool. We select the YZ plane. Now activate the spline tool. And we're going to create a spline. Double click to end the spline and then exit the sketch. Next, I'm going to right click on the sketch and copy it. Right click again and paste. Now we've got two sketches that occupy the same place. Let's deselect everything and we're going to use the translate command. Element to translate, sketch 2. Under the direction to translate, let's use the x axis. Distance, let's enter a value of 30 millimeters. Tab, and OK. Next, let's modify this curve. I can do that by double clicking on it, but the only measurement I can really change from this dialog window is the distance value. What I need to do is modify Sketch 2. Let's double click on it. We're going to move this point. I'm actually going to insert a couple more points. We double click on the sketch and the spline definition window opens. Let's select point 2. You see that the corresponding point is highlighted in our workspace. We've got the add point after radial button selected in the window. To insert my point, I simply click on the spline. It becomes point number 6. Let's add one more point. And click OK. Let's adjust the points a little. OK, something like this. Exit the sketch. As you see, Translate 1 automatically changed shape. Let's right click, select Hide Show. We still have Sketch 1 in our cache. Let's right click and paste it. You see that it appears here as Sketch 3. Let's deselect everything. What I'll do next is insert a plane. Under Plane Type, let's select Offset from Plane. Under Reference, let's right click and select the YZ plane. Click OK. Next, let's change the support for Sketch 3. We'll right click. Actually, let me do this differently. Let's select Sketch 3. And now we choose Edit from the main menu and Sketch 3 Object. Change Sketch Support. Right clicking in the specification tree gives me the same option, but it would have appeared too low on my screen for you, so I've done it this way instead. Under Type, let's choose Sliding. Reference, I'll use this plane. And click OK. What's happened here? Sketch 3 has moved here, as you see. I also see that I've entered the wrong offset distance for plane 1. Let's expand the tree, double click on the offset, and let's change the value from 20 to 60 millimeters, tab, and OK. Now it looks better. Now I'll double click on Sketch 3 and make some additional modifications. Let's double click and enter more points on our spline. Click here and here. OK. OK, something like this. Let's exit the sketch. Now I'm going to create one more sketch on the XY plane. Activate the Profile tool. Something like this. Exit the sketch. As you noticed, I didn't end the line chain. I just simply exited the sketch. The last point I created became the end of the chain automatically. 
I could have also simply clicked the Escape key to end the chain as well. I'm going to click Outside to deselect everything. Now let's activate the Multi-Section Surface tool. I'm going to select Sketch 1, Translate 1, Sketch 3, and Sketch number 4. Click on the arrows to point in the right direction, and we have our surface. Let's put everything except the surface in No Show. Right click, select Hide Show. Next, let's activate the boundary function and for our propagation type, select Tangent Continuity. Select this edge and click OK. Now let's create a plane that goes through this line and is normal to the XY plane. Under Plane Type, let's select Angle Normal to Plane. Choose Boundary 1 as our rotation axis. Under Reference, right click and select the XY plane. Click the Normal to Plane button. A 90 degree angle automatically populates the angle value field. Once again, we can drag and move. Click OK. Now let's activate the extrude command. Under Profile, I'll use Boundary 1. Under Direction, right click and select Create Line. Under the line type, select Normal to Surface. Select this plane and this point. For our distance value, we'll enter 40 millimeters and click OK. And let's drag this handle. Oops, I grabbed limit 2 instead of limit 1 here. I'm simply going to enter a value of 0 millimeters under limit 1. Tab and OK. Next, let's select the line tool and create a line between these two points. Click OK. Activate the Fill command now. Select this edge, and this edge, and this line, and click OK. And finally, activate the Join command. Select all three surfaces, and click OK. Oops, it looks like I missed Fill 1. Let's double click Join 1 and select Fill 1. Click OK. Now right click on Join 1, select Properties, and let's change the color. Click OK. Finally, we're ready to activate the Isoparametric Curve tool. Let me undock this toolbar. As you see, it's a subtool of the Curves command on the Wireframe toolbar. Under Support, Join 1 is pre-selected. Now let's select a point. An isoparametric curve is a line which runs along the surface in U and V directions. As you can see, when I mouse over the surface, the line changes. We simply click on the surface to make a point selection. Next, we've got the Direction Entry box. We can swap the direction by clicking this icon. Or swap the U and V parameters, in other words. The same option I can get by right-clicking when I mouse over the surface. I select Swap UV. I can also choose to keep this point. If I select this, Katia creates a point right here. I can also select Edit to edit the point. The Tuner dialog window opens. Check Relative to see the relative origin displayed. I can reset the origin, and now my origin is right here, with parameters 0 and 0. At the bottom of the tuner window, I can establish the parametric step value. 
This is basically an increment of the u and v lengths. Let's reset our values to zero. Tab. We can also enter our own parametric step value. For example, I've entered 0 0.1. Now the steps that the point moves from the origin point are going to be smaller. Let's reset back to zero and click close. Next is the swapped cells option. Basically this allows you to change the direction of the isoparametric curves on selected surfaces. Let's cancel out and let's deselect everything. Now reactivate the isoparametric curve command. We're going to choose a support. Select the same one. And this point here. OK, watch what happens when I select a surface for the swapped cells selection area. You see that the direction of the isoparametric curve changed. I'm going to click OK. Let me expand the feature isoparameter 1. You see our swap UV parameter listed. Double click it to open an edit window. To adjust your swap, you simply change the value from true to false or vice versa. And let's cancel out of that for now. And this concludes our tutorial on the isoparametric curve command.